This is a video about how to use watercolours, just a bit of an intro. I'm going to be doing some colour mixing and some colour application today. If you get your palettes and it's a little bit dirty, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. Just take a little paintbrush and oh, just carefully rub some water over the top of the palette like this okay, until your palette is clean. You can just let the water drip into your um, into your water parts. If it collects, then you can just kind of pour it to the end and take it back into your water pot like that. If you're trying to mix colours, sometimes the easiest way to do that is to use a viewfinder to isolate the colours. So I'm going to have a go at making this kind of very pale green here. So I'm going to start by mixing some water on my brush. I'm going to have a little bit of this dark green. Now the more times I move my paintbrush around in the palette, the darker or the brighter the colour will become. I mean, I can test that green on its own and see if it's what I want, but I don't think it's going to be. So I'm going to test it on this circle here. The reason I'm, I'm going to test it on this circle here is because I'm going to take it right to the edge of the paper, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to try practicing my control as well while I'm doing while I'm testing my colour. So I'm always going to paint in the same direction as the line and I'm always going to rotate my paper as I'm going. Every so often I'll just reapply some paint like this and I'll carry on turning the paper like that. Again, like I said, bring it right up to the edge. I've just added a little bit more water because you do need to keep adding more water otherwise the paint will become a little bit too dry and it'll end up looking a bit scratchy. So as I said, every so often I'll just stop and I'll add a little bit more water. But I don't want too much water, otherwise the colours are going to be a bit pale. I'm just going to pop that on there and fill that space. Now, at the moment you can see quite a lot of brush strokes. You can get rid of those quite easily. Just put your paintbrush into the water. And just using your paintbrush on the side, just very gently kind of blend out those brush strokes. The nature of watercolour is you're never going to get rid of them completely, but you can lessen the impact. You will end up with this sort of puddling. That doesn't matter, really. Um, if you've got too much water on your brush, simply dry your brush on a tissue or a paper towel and you can use your brush to suck up that extra water, dab it on the towel, and then just repeat that process. Okay. So I've had quite a lot of water in this one, and I didn't have very much paint on it. So I'm going to test this and see what it looks like. So this is the colour that I'm trying to match. It doesn't match that, it's much too dark. But it's quite nice for some of the other, um, other hues on the image there. I might want to use it in this bottom leaf here in that bottom corner. That's quite a nice match. But if we go back to trying to make this kind of very pastel white here, I'm going to have a go and this time I'm going to try and add a little bit of white to that. So I'm going to take my dark green and I'm going to mix it with my white. Remember the more times I put my paintbrush over the palette, the darker or the brighter it will become. If you think your paint is getting a little bit too thick, if it's becoming a bit too much like a paste, just add a little bit more water like this. That's quite a nice consistency. I can see it with just kind of, I can pick, almost pick some up on my brush. So I'm going to have another go with that. Again, I'm going to turn my paper around as I go. I always want to have my brush facing the line. So the brush faces the line like that, but you move it along in the same direction as the line. I would recommend always doing that when you're trying to fill in shapes. It just allows you to paint within that space much more easily. So you can see that I'm coming back and I'm adding quite a lot of water to that because actually I had a bit too much um, paint on there, the ratio wasn't quite right, so it started to look a bit scratchy. So you can see that I'm just using the water to just kind of blend out those brush strokes again as before. 
again I think I've got a little bit too much water so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of take some of that extra off and dab it onto that onto that tissue or you can use a paper towel it doesn't really matter both work so now I actually think that that is not a bad match so what I used to get that very pale green um, was this green and this white here so now I'm going to try and make some of these much darker greens over here. So I've got my mid green just here. I've got my lighter green. And I really want to try and make this really kind of dark hue. A hue is just a word for a, a shade of a colour. This time I'm going to mix a little bit of the dark blue that's next to it together with the dark green. And just see how that comes out. I'm going to mix those together. Don't worry, you can always clean them later, just like I showed you at the beginning of the video. I'm going to try those two on their own before I do anything else and see what that looks like. So remember, brush facing the line, but then always painting along in the same direction as the line. And always spinning the paper. Add a little bit more water, spin it round. Bring it right to the edge of the paper and then fill that in. I'm going to need a bit more paint and add that into the circle. Again, add a little bit of water just to get rid of those brush strokes. It's a delicate balance. Obviously, the more water that you add, the paler will, the colour will become, but you do need a little bit of water to <clears throat> just get rid of those brush strokes. I'm going to dab the excess on my tissue. Now, it's not bad, it's getting there, but I've made that a bit too blue. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to add just the dark green on its own this time without the blue. Remember, the more times you put your paintbrush across the palette, the darker or brighter the colours will become. If this is wet, I can drop that green straight in there if it's dry, it won't mix, but if it's wet, the colours that are already on the paper will mix with the colour that I'm adding. Now that's not a bad match. Let me just see if I can add a little bit of shine. That, that's a, not a bad match, but it could be a tiny bit darker. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to add a tiny little bit of black, which is just at the end of that palette. I'm going to do it quite a few times because I want it to be quite a lot darker. And then I'm just going to drop that colour straight in as I did before. Remember, always have your brush moving in the same direction. Now I've worked quite quickly here so it means that all of the colours underneath are still wet. So I'm able to blend those together. But if not, it doesn't matter that you've got loads of circles, I would just take another one. Now that's worked really well, so what I used for that one was um, the dark blue, but more of the dark green and just a tiny little bit of black. Remember, if you've got too much paint on your, on your um, sheet, you can just use a dry brush like this and just dab it and remove it. And you can see that that is quite easily and quite quickly removing the paint. That's good if you accidentally go too dark or maybe you paint in an area that you didn't want to. If you're really quick, you can take it back off again. You can't ever get rid of it completely, but if you do make a mistake, as I said, it is, it is possible to lessen the colour. You can make it slightly lighter. And then you can also dab tissue on top, if you're careful. And you can see that I've managed to remove most of that. So that's a good, good top tip if you've made any mistakes. Something else to remember about when you're working with watercolours. You've got to be careful with the paper. Because if you oversaturate the paper, that means if you put too much water on it, you're going to make it quite soggy and you're going to damage the paper. But also, if you move your paintbrush backwards and forwards over the same area too many times, 
you're going to damage the paper as well. So you just have to be really careful when you're walking, working with watercolours. I'm going to try and show you what I mean. I'm going to try and put loads of water on. I'm not really testing a colour now. I'm just going to show you what happens. If I was to start moving that brush around it, you can see that I'm pressing a little bit too hard. So what's happening is there are bubbles that are starting to appear on the paper. What's happening there is I'm simply rubbing the surface of the paper off. And if you carry on doing that, um, you'd just end up with a hole and your paper would be damaged. So anytime you see a paper getting little bubbles, just start working on that area. You can dab it off if you like, but it means that your paper is becoming damaged and you need to stop working in that area. You could leave the colour on, you can let it dry, but don't work into it any more than that. So the idea is that, as I said, you use your little viewfinder and you try and match all the different colours. Write the colours down when you've accurately matched them. So, for example, if I was, had I just made that one, I would have written that I put a dark green and some white just here in the centre so that when you come to paint your, um, your drawing, you know exactly how you made the paint colours before. If you're doing challenge number two or three, then you're going to have a few more colours that you need to experiment. These colours here, these paler colours, are the colours that you want to start with. So I'll just flip this sheet round and show you on the other side. If you take a little bit of red, um, and that is the red next to the brown, and mix it with the white, then you're going to get these kind of nice peachy colours. My white's quite dirty, or from when I was doing the, um, the green, so again, as I showed you earlier, all you need to do is just put a little bit of water over your palette and then just let that just drip into your water parts turn it over if you need and there you go your palette's nice and dry you don't need to go to the sink as i said you can just do that really easily there take a little bit of this red make sure you've gone over that a few times so that you're washing the pigment off the palette that's a special um, art keyword for paint it's pigment it just means the colour element of the paint. So you can see there that that's quickly making quite a nice pink. So I'm just going to test that on one of my circles. I want to make this nice kind of peachy pink here. I'm going to paint that on. Remember, paintbrush facing the line and then just always moving in the same direction. I can see that this is going to want a little bit more water as well, starting to look a bit scratchy. And then I'm just going to try and blend that out, get rid of those brush strokes, and also fill the centre of that circle there, bringing it right to the edge so that you can hold it next to the colour you're matching. Just get rid of the excess. Sometimes you'll get a small kind of little grainy effect in the watercolour. Don't worry, that's just the pigment, that's the colour that I mentioned earlier separating from the water. Don't worry about it at all. So that there is, it's not a bad match. It's a little bit too pinky. So I think I'm going to add a tiny little bit of this gold, which is just next to the yellow. And then I'm going to mix that with a little bit more water. And I'm going to have another try. And I'm going to, again, brush facing the line but always painting along in the same direction. I'm going to need a little bit more, I don't think I've got quite enough. Again, bring it right to the edge. If you hear that scratchy sound, or, you, or your paint looks scratchy, it means you don't have enough paint. Again, add a little bit more water. I think that is a slightly better match. Yeah, that looks much better. So for that kind of very peachy um, hue just there, I used a little bit of pink or red just next to the brown. Don't use the one next to the um, blue, that's actually orange. So this one here, this pink, and then the white. And lastly, I added a little bit of gold and some water. And that's, yeah, I'm quite happy with that match. 
and then you would just repeat that process until you'd made your um, kind of slightly darker pink. This one's got a bit more of a purpley hue there and then you would do your um, oranges and then your deep kind of ready oranges. You would only ever mix and paint your darkest colours last. So if you're doing challenge number two, you wouldn't um, start painting this navy blue black background until you'd done the whole leaf. Um, just because otherwise the navy is going to mix with the other colours and your whole picture just will become a little bit too dark. But the most important thing today is you are going to practice making all your colours before you apply anything onto your watercolour um, leaf drawing. Alright, good luck.